you're coming to uh, Rascals here in Worcester, and is this the first date on your tour? It is. Wow. The first date on the tour, back from the pandemic. Wow. First day. <laughs> yeah, so this is your first real, sh- I know you've played a few shows, kind of, you know, socially distant shows and things like that, but this is, is this the first, like, real touring as close as the way it used to be that you've, you're you starting here in Worcester? Yeah, this is, yeah, this is the closest um, to what it used to be. <laughs> That's yeah. a good way to put it. Yeah, this is the first show in Worcester and uh, first of many. Uh, the whole rest of the year is booked out, so we're going to be uh, traveling around to uh, uh, everywhere we can, you know, looking forward to it. Making up for lost time, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah the, the whole pandemic shut everybody down, really, and, uh, and this is like a light at the end of the tunnel. We're really looking forward to uh, touring again and being on the road and playing shows and seeing everybody. And, uh, what a great place to start, Worcester. Yes, this is a hard rock in town. Uh, that I'll is for say. sure. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we're very excited to see you here, and and very excited that you're playing uh, Empire all the way through for the 30th anniversary, and also you're uh, you've thrown in Rage for Order too, which is fantastic. What was so what what was behind throwing in Rage for Order on this tour? Also, well, um, of course, I really wanted to celebrate the 30 year anniversary yeah. of Empire. Oh, yeah. I have a new box release coming out yeah. as well for that. It's a it's a wonderful album to play, and I I really really never got a chance to play all the songs on the album, so this is really a treat for me as well as as people who enjoy the record. And the reason why I threw Rage for Order in there as a kind of an opening set is simply because I wanted to. I just love that album, and um, it's it's a completely different kind of record than Empire is. So there's this nice contrast of of. Queensryche style, you know, uh, that you see there with the, the darker, more introspective Rage for Order, and then with the, the more open and uh, optimistic Empire album, you know. Yeah. And uh, I, think, I think it makes for good theater, it makes for a good show, and um, really looking forward to uh, people seeing it. That's the best reason to do something, right? Because I want to. That's well, yeah, it, it actually is, because I really, really want to. Yeah, right, that's the best. <laughs> I was I was wondering. So, in preparation for playing these albums in its entirety, and I'm I'm assuming you're playing them in order, right, all the way through. Um, yeah, all of chronological order. Yeah, uh, album order. While you're preparing for this and 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 rehearsing and going through the albums, is there anything like say? Is there anything from Empire that you may have rediscovered? Because you mentioned you didn't get to play a lot of this stuff live. And so is there anything from Empire Rage for Order that you've rediscovered or that while getting familiar with them again or playing them in this order has kind of surprised you or you've discovered something different about them? Well, I think there's a, a, a joy that I've definitely experienced um, performing the Empire album. It, it's kind of an uplifting record, even though it's got a couple tracks on it that are kind of uh, more, I guess, more globally aware um, society in, uh, in in transition, sort of pointing out, you know, our our problems with uh, you know global warming and uh, homelessness, which seems to be a, a plague upon the country and the world. In a sense, uh, there are songs on on the album that deal with that that are pretty timely because we're still dealing with those issues. But overall, it, it's a record that has a lot of uh, uh, uplifting kind of songs songs that are uh, hopeful of what we can do if we put our minds to it, you know? And so uh, that, I guess I've been experiencing that, really, and uh, looking at it in a different way that I never did before. While we're talking about that, I got to say, I just want to bring up Operation Mind Crime really quickly, because this is a question I wanted to ask you after talking about Empire, that I don't know of many albums that become even more relevant as time <laughs> goes on. As far as Operation Mind Crime goes, I can't. I, you know, I can't really think of one off the top of my head. But it's amazing how more relevant the subject matter of that album has become as we have moved on. I mean, you know, the fake news and uh, you know the the government manipulating uh, companies and media and, and people. And, uh, it's mm-hmm. it's unbelievable. Uh, how, what are what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I can I can see why why you could say that. The, the messages in that album, Operation Mind Crime, are, are timeless, really. Yeah. Uh, it, it's really a, a study in human nature and 
and uh, how we roll, you know, which I guess has been kind of with us, you know, for thousands and thousands of years, I guess, ever since, you know, civilization started, really. Um, there's always going to be, I think, people that are trying to vie for power and keep control over other people in order to have them do what they want them to do. You know, it's kind of the age-old human story. And uh, and that's what mind crime is about, really. It's just set in a, in a location, a time. But as you pointed out, the, the time could be any time, really, and uh, especially now, because uh, it's just a lot more prevalent in our face. We're coming to terms with uh, the fact that this is happening. <laughs> yeah, know, we're being right. we're being lied to. We're being sold. You know, different projects and agendas and and, and things like that. So yeah, it's a uh, it's a timeless record. It really is. It's just amazing. It, it I, you know what? It's amazing. And also, please don't take this the wrong way. It's sad that it's it's <laughs> it's even to me even more relevant today because you think we would evolve. Uh, from there, yeah. but um, you know, like you said, thousands and thousands of years of manipulation by by people in charge. You know, it's a it's yeah. a timeless thing. Also, I was listening to the Sweet Oblivion album that came out in April. Mm-hmm. Is that uh, and uh, amazing stuff? I mean, it's uh, the guitar playing on it. It's incredible. Is are you gonna are you just sticking to the two albums on this tour? Or are you gonna be playing any any stuff from from that? Um, yeah, I'm not playing anything from the Sweet Oblivion records yet. Um, I have another album I'm going to do under Sweet Oblivion, and I think when I when I finish that one, then I'll probably do a tour of uh, of that record, those records, I guess, because oh, nice. there'll be three of them at that time, and I'll have enough material to you know play live, right? But yeah, they're they're uh, they're fun records. They're cool, and and you're right, the guitar playing is amazing on on uh, on them both, both different guitar players, but. Mm. Uh, equally as uh, entertaining and, and interesting. Definitely and really a treat to be part of that whole um, project. You know, I'm really happy with it. And I got I to gotta compliment you on your performance on uh, Shine On You Crazy Diamond. Uh, well, I mean, that's I, I, first of all, I'm a huge Pink Floyd fan, and to cover Pink Floyd is a daunting task, I would imagine. And uh, you guys nail it. And you did have a little bit, you had some pretty good musicians backing you up on that one how, how did you get involved in that project uh you know they asked me nice. and um <laughs> i'm i'm a huge pink floyd fan so i i jumped at the chance to to record you know a song and one of the uh, pieces of music that really helped shape my musicality was uh shine on you crazy diamond that was one of the things i first really heard you know from a musical standpoint as a, as a young musician growing up and and uh it really hit me that song or that piece of music. I can't really call it a song because it's, it's more than a song. Yes, you know? yes. <laughs> it's all these different <laughs> movements and different parts, you know, uh, which, which I found to be incredibly interesting at the time, you know, back in 1975 when I first heard it. And, uh, and now of course, uh, being part of uh, the remake of it, I'm very proud to be part of it. And, uh, yeah, great team of uh, musicians put that together and I'm glad you like it. I yeah. hope more people uh, hear it. Yeah, I I I really love it. And did you did you have any interaction with any other musicians? I'm not quite sure how that came together in these times of pandemic. Or like, did you have any interaction with Steve Hackett or Billy Sheen or Ian Pace or any or Jeff Downs? No, it was all done over the internet. You know the the uh, the virtual studio, so to speak. Uh, but I know some of those guys, and um, you know, had conversations with them, of course, over the phone and and. Uh, the uh, the new way, I guess, of recording, at least over the last year and a half yeah. or so, has been you know virtually you know different musicians playing in different studios around the world, and then we put it all together, you know, and uh, it works really well. Actually, it's it's fantastic because it's all you really need to do is talk about it, you know, ahead of time and, and get your game plan in order what you're going to do, and and then you just start you know, passing around the uh, the files and the information to to get the song the way you want it. You know, well, it it sounds amazing, so I'm not going to complain. That's for sure. <laughs> that sounds pretty <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I also wanted to ask: Are you still making wine? I am. Yeah, Insania uh, is yes. my brand. We do a, a red Pinot Noir and a, a white Sauvignon Blanc and a Pinot Gris, and uh, we make it in uh, the Alsace region, which is uh, on the border of uh, France and Germany. And uh, it's 
very good wine, very good, I have to say. I've been working hard at it for many years. Um, what? Which is harder, making wine or writing a song? Or is that just not even a comparison? Well, they're comparable in a couple ways. Um, you know, with wine, you take... These, uh, especially if you're going to do a blend or a meritage, you know, you take mm-hmm. several different grape varietals and you, you blend them together to, to make, you know, your final uh, wine that you put in the bottle. And with the, writing a song, you know, you take these different instruments and you blend them together to form uh, a song, you know. So there's, there's similarities in that respect. It's also kind of labor-intensive. Both, both projects are labor-intensive. You spend a lot of time cultivating your grapes and growing them and taking care of them in order to, you know, uh, make the best wine that you possibly can. And uh, same with, with music, you know, you, you, you spend a lot of time picking the notes that you're going to use and, and uh, to construct a song, you know. So, yeah, they both are labor-intensive. They take time and uh, uh, kind of similar in a way. Yeah. And do you think that they, they both... Uh, um retain the the personality or the character of of the person creating them yeah i I do i really do and and especially making wine that's what you really strive to do is to to create something that that's an expression of where the grapes come from you know the the area of the ground the terroir as the french say and uh and with music it's a it can be the same thing, you know. You're, you're you're striving to get your idea across, your emotion that you're trying to convey, the words that you're saying. You, you try to give them, you know, um, uh, support. You know, with the uh, with the chords you choose and the melodies that you choose. Well, I appreciate you answering that that question, and uh, and uh, we are very much looking forward to seeing you here. And I can't believe you're starting the tour in Worcester. It's quite an honor. For the city, so we will see you uh, next week here at Rascals in Worcester. And Jeff Tate, thank you so much for taking the time today. We appreciate it. My pleasure, Mike. Talk to you soon. Take right. care, and thank you for the interview, man. You got it, man. Thank you very much.